Uh, I see Paul, Chuck, Jennifer Stewart. Man, that's a nice pool you got in the background, Jennifer. I, I want to I want to jump in that right now. Uh, Denise, Mark, Pear, miss you at the meetup group last week, Pear. Uh, Alicia, Ken, Ken's on here. From Gary, Indiana, or somewhere around here. Christy, Selena, welcome, welcome, John. Happy to have you guys this morning on the Tuesday morning. Um, I'm just going to kind of uh, let some more people get on here. Anybody got any any more? I, I do want to let you guys know. You guys can chat. There's a there's a chat feature here at the bottom. You guys can get in and ask questions. Um, we're going to kind of make it a little bit interactive. Dan's got a good PowerPoint and I'm excited to have Dan on today. Um, but, uh, if you guys have any questions, you guys can throw those in the chat there. And, uh, I do think that we've got the, uh, I think we've got everybody muted, but at the end, we'll definitely let, let, give everybody an opportunity to open up their mics and uh, ask questions to Dan at the end of today's call. So I um, want to thank you guys for having, so I'll probably, uh, get going here. Um, <laughs> I can uh, figure out my new computer here. I got a new computer. It doesn't have Office 365. So um, I'm trying to figure out Keynote now, which is a little bit different for me. So I apologize. All right. So welcome. Thanks, you guys, for being on here this morning, um, this wonderful May morning. Uh, it's beautiful here in Northwest Indiana. It's going to be about high of 80 today, which is just beautiful weather for us. Um, I'm not sure where, how it's going to be in the rest of the country, but I know where it's at here. So welcome guys. Um, thanks for guys. Thank, thanks for, for being here. Uh, this is next month's call. I don't, we normally have last month's call up here, but it looks like we got next month's call up here at the beginning. Amelia, can you just hop on real quick? And wh who was last month again? Dave Richter. Oh, Dave Richter. Okay. I'm like, I know we had a great guest last, last month. So last month we had Dave Richter on. Profit First for Real Estate Investors. If you guys haven't watched that, you guys can go to the Good Success website and watch, and watch the last call. It was a good call. Um, and to me, I think I think knowing your numbers is probably the key to most real estate investors um, becoming actual profitable <laughs> in their real estate business. Um, I think you can do all the other things. You can learn everything else. Um, but, uh, you know, you definitely want to make sure that you... Uh, get back to that so or, and, and learn your numbers can everybody see my screen amelia i'm sorry i'm, I'm having yes. problems over here you, you can't see the screen i just want to make sure because it, it's a little different on my end here yes, uh, so today's call dan welcome dan um are you in cleveland right now i'm actually uh, i do a lot of investing in cleveland but i live in delaware so okay. I don't know where I'm at because I'm always traveling all over the world now speaking. So, so I never really know what state, state I'm in sometimes, but I live in Delaware, right outside of Philadelphia. So he's right over there and uh, he does does do a lot of investing. I, I know a lot of the people that invest with us have also invested with Dan um, and most of their deals they've done is in Cleveland. I know he also has some deals in other countries, Rotan even right now, Honduras. So maybe we'll talk a little bit about that, but I'm excited to have him on. He's going to talk today about how to create passive wealth with seller finance notes, having true passive wealth. And that's really what we all want. We want to replace our income, but we don't want to replace our income with just another job. Um, and then also controlling your own vision and kind of creating your own vision and being able to control your own destiny. So I'm excited to have Dan on today. Thank you, Dan, for being on today. Uh, it's my pleasure, Tom. I've been looking forward to this. I get obviously, you know, I speak well, probably 40 plus times a year now. And, it, you know, when I see this on my calendar, we talked about it months ago. And there's some people I'm really, I really look forward to speaking with, group speaking with, and then yours, because you do things the right way. That's really what it comes down to is your, your moral character, your ethics, and your, um, and how you run things and how you run your business. It's just an honor to, to be here and really share with your group and just hoping people can take something away from this and really put it into their own life, either now or in the future. And like I said, I'm not here to sell anything, you know, put your credit cards away. This is not, I, I just don't like selling online. I'm just going to give you some free stuff at the end to help you guys. And just, you know, I know people talk about this all the time, but their actions and their alignment is just not there, right? They all want to create passive income. And if you ask anybody why they get in this business, it's always so I can do what I want, when I want, with whom I want. And then you look at their actions and all they did was create themselves a transactional business. And they created a higher paying job as, you know, wholesalers, fix and flippers, you know, uh, landlords is somewhat active, passive, and then they get into different verticals. And uh, that's why I love doing this. I mean, for me, 
I don't need to do this. And I don't say that to brag. I, I, I just really to impress upon you. I do this because I truly, truly love helping people. And I know when I speak, there's always one or two people whose eyes open up and they're like, wow, I could do this. And you see the multiple testimonials online of people that do that. And I, and I don't, I'm not there to, you know, show off. I'm not putting pictures of my cars, my boat or my watches on there. It's just, Hey, you can truly have this life and whatever your vision is, is why I love doing this. And, and I'm saying this, it's a long thank you for having me on because you really do that. And I love what you're doing in your group. And that's why it's an honor to be on here with you guys. Awesome. Um, and, and, I, and one of the things that attracted me to Dan is I know he's also a giver. And that's one of the things that had good success here. You know, one of my statements is work to have to give, be a conduit, not a bucket. Like we're not here just for ourselves. Yes, we want to have a good life. And there's nothing wrong with having a good life. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's not just about like how we gave ourselves a good life. It's like, what did we do for others and what did we invest in others? And that's one of the things that attracted me to Dan. I appreciate you being on, um, Dan. So thank you for that. Uh, so me, since last month, we've had a very, very eventful month. Um, me, I, I know we, we've been talking about this for a long time, but me and my wife um, were sponsors and we raised a bunch of money and helped a lot of these kids go to Ecuador. Um, and it was the first time I actually had been in Ecuador. I've been a lot of been in a lot of different South American countries and Central American countries, but this is the first time in Ecuador. Beautiful country. Um, probably the scariest thing about the whole trip was the bus ride. Um, if you've never been in a third world country that has air brakes and it's like constantly going, it's like shh, shh. like the whole time you're on this up and down these mountains with going around corners with no guardrails, and you're just looking down, and it's like 200 feet before you even hit the first rock um going down that cliff um it was it was definitely an adventure but the kids really got involved this is probably the first um trip that we've been on we've been doing this for three years now um with with our with our seniors at our our christian school and this is the first time where i feel like the kids really experienced what i was have always been hoping that they would experience um they really got to get into the communities and see people's houses and you have to understand like 60 to 70 percent of the people that live in ecuador have dirt floors um, you know, we are so blessed in America and to be able to see that, um, to be able to see, you know, what this, 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 this pastor is doing and trying to help. It's amazing that they will line up for a piece of bread, like literally a piece of bread and a, and a cup of juice that like, and for some of, some of those people that will be the best meal that they would have that entire week. Um, so just to kind of really put things in perspective and then also kind of giving them the eternal life. Um, with 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 God and giving them the gospel, I think is also a very important uh, piece of the puzzle there. But so you guys, I try to take some pictures of some houses and some different things that we that we did um, when we were there. The pastor had about fifteen hundred in church on Sunday, so it was a really good um, meeting. But our kids went out on Friday and actually uh, passed out a bunch of flyers and did a bunch of ministering on Saturday as well. We had three different parks, um, and each park had about about one hundred fifty people in each park and. Um, got to talk to them, got to give out gifts, you know, things like a basketball and a soccer, things that these kids would never have, honestly, if it weren't for somebody else that were willing to um, to give that, gave them some food, played some games with them. It, it was really a really a good time for the kids and everything. This is this is just a just a quick video of them lining up just to get a cup of juice and and some bread. I mean, that loaf of bread is like I said, the best meal they're gonna have all week. It was pretty crazy. So anyways, I uh, wanted to show you that also. So just so you guys know, the kids do three days of ministering, but they also have three days of fun. And uh, um, we, we did the, honestly, this was may have been the best zip lining I've ever done. Um, we've, I've been zip lining all over the world and we went over a 400 foot ravine 10 times back and forth. And the last one, one of the guides was like, Hey, you want me to take, take your video and, and video you. So he videoed hey, this whole thing, this whole run uh, for us. It was pretty cool. There's a river down there. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but I'm trying to wave. I'm not sure you can see me waving, but and for you guys that are wondering, my wife was too chicken. She did not do the zip lining. I don't understand why. Um, but, uh, she did not do the zip lining there. So, um, this is my daughter, um, Amelia. I know Dan is frozen again on my screen. Can you guys still hear me, Amelia? 
Yes, it's working okay. fine for me. All right, awesome, cool. Um, all right, so also we had our spring formal at our Christian high school. So this is my two daughters and a couple of her friends, actually two of their cousins and then two other girls as well. Um, that, that's always fun for the girls to get dressed up and uh, act a little crazy uh, and do some fun things. My daughter, Lily, is graduating, 3.93 um, GPA, um, fourth in her class, and also found out this week that she's, so she got accepted to Pensacola Christian College. And she also got a scholarship um, for that college as well. So we're really proud of her. Um, and she's actually talking with somebody, I believe right now, <laughs> she actually has off today and tomorrow because at their school, if they have all straight A's, they don't have to take uh, finals. So she doesn't have to go to school today or tomorrow for finals. Uh, and it's definitely a new part of life for me. This is the first time we've had a, a high schooler graduate. This is the first time we've had a kid that's going to be going off to college. So pray for mom and dad. Um, we are trying to figure this out. You, you, you do this, you know, you, you train them up all the way through grade school, through high school, you try to invest in them as much as you possibly can. And then you kind of have to say goodbye to them for a little while. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a, it's a sweet memory, but it's also kind of a little bit of a different time of life for us. So we're, we're, we're trying to figure it out. So um, also my other daughter, Edie there, as you can see, they always do this karate pose cause they're both in karate and both black belts and, um, but they're, they're always a little funny there and crazy. So upcoming, I always want to, uh, talk about some events from different people around the country that I, I, I will be at these events. I'll be speaking at these events and I always promote these events. So investor addicts cruise, February 22nd, 2025, and then deal maker March 18th through the 21st, 2025. Um, those are two events. I, I promise you, you'll be happy that you went. Also, if you haven't signed up yet for the free for all September five through seven, Dan is actually one of our speakers. This is the first time he's going to be speaking at this event. And I'm, I'm really excited about having him. Um, the speaker lineup this, this year, I'm telling you guys is just off the charts. This is, this is a list of our speakers and sponsors. Um, I'm telling you, I mean, any one of these people would be worth coming in and listening to all weekend. So to have them in, in a, in a group, all at once to me, I think is absolutely amazing. Um, and I'm, I'm super excited about it. Get your VIP tickets. So the Wednesday before this starts, we're doing a VIP dinner. Um, only the VIPs get it and only the speaker sponsor. So it's basically a, a VIP speaker sponsor event. Um, just, you know, just having dinner and, and networking with people. So make sure you guys get your VIP tickets for that. Um, these are the prices. I'm not going to go over that, but you guys can find that on the Good Success website. And if you guys haven't joined the free for all Facebook group, please do. Um, our goal is to get that up, up, you know, to more members and having more action on there. We're starting to see some, some, some more action on there. So keep, continue that up. Appreciate you all for being on there um, and helping us out with that. So join the Facebook group. Um, um, and remember to be a conduit, not a buck. We've already talked about that a little bit this morning. Um, if you guys are looking for capital, um, we do have a hard money lending company, Conduit Capital. Um, kind of goes right along with our be a conduit, not a bucket statement. And that's kind of what we feel like we are. We are the conduit between, you know, borrowers and lenders. Uh, and so if you guys are interested in that, www.uconduitcapital.com. Um, our next meetup group, if you're local here, I know some of the people around here are local. We're doing a Tuesday. We're switching our nights from Thursdays to Tuesdays. And I'm going to be the speaker. This is the first time I'm actually speaking at my own meetup group here in 18 months. Uh, and I, we're, I'm, I'm going to talk about high level, the 10 ways you can get into real estate right now. I love a lot of different ways in real estate. So we're going to talk about that. And I'm just going to let the conversation go whatever direction you want. But we're going to focus on making enough passive income to replace your, your own personal income right now. That's kind of what we're going to, we're going to focus on um, with that. So I'm excited about that meetup group. Also, next month's call, June 11th, it's going to be the same day as our meetup group. I'm having Alicia Merriman on. I'm telling you. I have not met in an Airbnb expert in the country that's that has it as dialed in as Alicia. She really does. She's a great speaker. She'll have some great slides. She's got AI that she can help you with. There's a lot of different stuff that she can help you with and you guys will enjoy it. So next, um, June, so next call, June 11th, 10 a.m. Central time. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna just give the floor to Dan. Um, let me see if I can get stop sharing here and uh, we will get on with the call. So thank you for being on. And Dan, the floor is yours, sir. All right, awesome. Let me get set up here. We're good to go. Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you guys can see me, my screen? You don't want to see me anymore. It's about all about seeing my screen now. I got so, you. Again, thanks so much, Tom, for having me on. I just I love being on here. And uh, I can tell you what, I'm like your wife. I'm chicken. Uh, there's two things scaring me in this world. One is heights. 
So you will not catch me on that. That's not my vision. Unless there's water on, on the boat, I'm not getting on that damn thing. So I give you a lot of credit for jumping on that, but I'm hanging with your wife back and playing the chicken dance. So anyway, Man, let's talk about I just lost a lot of respect for you, Dan. <laughs> At least I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to talk about what I've done. So a little bit about my story. I don't want to spend too much time on my story because really this is not about me. It's about what I could do for you. I'm not here to, to, to showboat or anything. But, you know, I've been in the business 33 years. I've done almost 4,000 transactions. They're probably over 4,000 now with, with non-performing notes. Um, I was a very big fix and flipper and wholesaler back in the day. I used to flip 40, 50 properties a year. My rule is if I didn't make at least $50,000 flipping it, I didn't flip it. I would wholesale it. So most of my properties were making me fifty to $80,000 on a flip. Uh, most, some of them were going six figures. So just figure out the numbers. I was doing multiple seven figures a year with, with, with life, really what everyone dreamed of. And uh, that almost literally lost everything. My, my wife, my kids, I was never there. I was working a hundred plus hours a week, making a lot of money to buy those beautiful cars that people talk about, the boats that people talk about, the watch collection that people talk about. And they, they put that on social media, but that truly wasn't my vision. So long story short, I had to make I had to make a, a little a little switch a big switch and I got into uh, passive income at that time and you know when you when you're making five six seven eight hundred dollars a month on a property it's not as sexy as making fifty thousand to eighty thousand right but when you do it hundreds of times it gets pretty damn sexy and then I got to the point where I was I had a lot of rentals and I said you know what it's starting to get a lot more work with these rentals so how do I do this where I don't have to deal with tenants toilets or trash so that's when I got into seller finance I became the bank. So my, my play is I raise capital from private and lenders to give them better than average returns. And I buy properties in emerging markets. You know, you mentioned about Cleveland. Cleveland is just one of the markets I buy in. I usually focus on about three to five markets. There's a lot of a great, I mean, Indiana's a great emerging market. There's a lot of good emerging markets out there. And I'm going to talk about the markets I go into. I'm going to talk about what properties make sense for my end buyers. Now, my end buyers are turnkey investors. These are your dentists, your doctors, your business owners, not active real estate investors, right? That's not who I sell my properties to. Although they do buy them, but I generally, I help practitioners who are out there in their business that want to stick, they, they still want to clean teeth. They want to do their business, but they want to build wealth. They want to build legacy wealth. So I provide that for them. So think about all your wholesalers out there that are actually selling properties to make five, 10, $20,000 wholesale fee. I beat a wholesaler every single day of the week never fails. Every time somebody comes to my events and sees what I do, they totally change their model because I bring in more capital. My seller finance notes are like ATM machines. I could print capital anytime I want on them. And imagine paying your private lenders back in no more than 12 to 18 months and staying in a deal for 30 years, collecting $600 to $2,000 a month for each note. And guys, I do that and I own over 400 seller finance notes. So it does pretty bit damn well for me. It allows me to do what I want and when people talk about truly doing what you want, what your vision is, that's how you do what you want. You back it out. You have to back it out and stop, stop chasing the shiny object syndrome. But I'm going to get into here a little bit more of, of what I do because I could keep talking about this. So what kind of properties do I love? I love those. And I'm, I'm not going to read each slide. I'm going to kind of over. I'm going to go over them quickly so I don't have to read them. And when I'm live, if you show up to this event live, I'm going to do a whiteboard presentation with you. Short time, we'll have a whiteboard of markers. And you're going to see that napkin presentation, right? You might have seen me post it yesterday. That's literally how I do my deal, guys. You could all talk about the technology, all talk about the minutiae, your CRMs, all these systems you have. This is literally a napkin. I was sitting at a restaurant with an investor. I pulled the napkin. I wrote the deal. Guys, you don't need all this crazy stuff that people talk about to do this business, right? So properties I love. I love rental properties in emerging markets. I like to be in the B to C class area, your blue to white collar areas, Okay. I love, um, I, I have to work with teams of, and when I put teams together, so let's say you're in a market, the things I do is I look for quality realtors, quality contractors, property managers, attorneys, short sale negotiators, title companies. Those are integral part of your team. That's why I stay in about three to five markets max. I don't want to build teams across the United States. I want to stay, I want to build, go deep with my team. Okay, and then I talk about my five exit strategies that I do with seller finance notes. I'm going to go through those with you here. And then how do we find deals? Okay, now obviously I got to do a, uh, a disclaimer because like any other free training, most people are going to get nothing out of it because they're not going to take action. Okay, so my results and my students' results are not are not typical because the average person who attends any free trainings gets zero results because they don't take action. 
just some pictures of some high level events we've done. Um, so who am I? I don't want to spend too much time on this because once again, it's not about me. It's about what I can do for you. But I have been at this. I can't even believe I'm saying this since 1990, 34 years now. Um, I've raised over 40 million, I'm sorry, $30 million, close to 40 million now. And I've used it in over $400 million of, of private money. Guys, when I raise private money, I'm raising at six to 8% interest only for three to five years. Now, what could you do if you raise money at six to 8% interest only, no points for three to five years? Can you do some damage? You should be lighting up that, hit that chat box. Like, what would you do with it? Tell me the type of deals you, I'm going to look later. What kind of deals would you do with that? Because guys, raising private money is probably the easiest thing in my business right now, all right? Because of the deals I do and how I show those deals. I don't ever ask for money. People ask me, how do I get involved in your deals, okay? Right now, I own over 600 assets, two-thirds of them, 431 seller finance notes. The rest are rental properties, okay? All single families, by the way. I do not own any multifamilies. I sold all my multis in 2019, my last 800 doors. I do not buy multis. I've invested as an LP in a couple of multis. Don't like them right now. The market is not there for them as we speak in today. And you better be real careful if you're buying them. So when I talk about over 600 doors, those are 600 individual properties. Okay. Um, one of my best attributes is, is what's got me on a lot of stages. My book, I don't know if you've seen it. A lot of you on here have probably read it already. It's Passive to Prosperous. It lays out my whole, my whole strategy. It talks about my vision, my why in that book. I love that book. Um, because it literally is a roadmap to how I do my business if you take action, okay? One of my best things, obviously, you can't be successful without this. And I have an amazing wife. Um, we've been married uh, 31 years. I have three awesome children. I have two grandsons. And that's my life. That's my vision, right? I want to be there to hang out with my, my grandkids, my kids, go on trips as I want to. I just got to do a Kentucky Derby 150th anniversary trip. Uh, and, and just have the best time of my life. So I love doing this, but my true vision in the summer, if you hit me up to speak at an event, I'm just going to tell you, hit me up that day and I'll tell you, ask me how the weather is. If the weather's bad, I'll speak. If not, you'll find me on the sand, okay? Or in the boat, okay? And now uh, we talked about and how Tom and I align, um, we talk about abundance and, uh, and, and living that abundant mindset. So guys, everything I do, third parties, all my trainings, all my classes, all my speaking events, all my books, Go to donations and and it's just you know I don't say this to once again to uh, to say Atta Boy Dan I just my core values my number one core value the twenty one core values my family and my business is abundance so I that's truly where it has gotten me pure happiness so I was coined the most the most uh, depressed millionaire you'd ever meet because I was making all that money but I truly didn't hit my vision so I implore you to find something in your life with your family. And for me, it's abundance of being part of groups and going very deep with those groups. And I think Tom and I are part of some, some of the same stuff we do. Um, so th that's really why I do what I do, right? People are like, why don't you just stop? I had a conversation. I was at the family office event, speaking with billionaires this week. And they're like, why don't you just stop doing what you do? Because I would be selfish to stop doing what I do. If I could do it, make enough money to help organizations like Tom's doing, then I'm going to keep doing it, right? So figure out your vision and keep doing it. Just some more events, some places where I operate in, obviously, because I live in Delaware, I'm here. I do Cleveland. I do Dayton. I'm big in Birmingham and Huntsville, Alabama, and Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, I'm not in all these areas at all times. I'm in them as long as I could be in them, and the numbers work. And I'm going to talk about the numbers, guys. Is that cool? If I could give you actual numbers, are you cool with that? I'm going to give you actual numbers. That's what I want to get into. Okay, so here's the properties I love, guys. This is what works. The reason I love these is because it's my end game. And when I say the end game, when I'm selling a property to a physical therapist, a dentist, a doctor, an insurance broker, a business owner, they don't want to get those calls in this class D neighborhoods that there's drug deals going on, there's bullet holes in their doors, uh, people aren't paying rent. They don't want that, okay? So once again, you got to figure out what your end game is. Now, I'm not saying buying class D neighborhoods aren't good. They're a different business model. It's not the model I choose. I've been there. It doesn't work for me. So I'm going to tell you exactly what I do. What does Dan do in his business to literally live the life that most people talk about? And, and this is what works for me. I've tried so much. This is what works for me. So I do a little bit more than most people. And they tell me I'm dumb. And I'm going to tell you exactly how I rehab my properties, which most people are going to tell me I'm an idiot for. I'm going to tell you where I buy my properties. Most people tell me I'm stupid because I could buy them for $20,000 instead of $80,000, $90,000. But I'm going to give you the roadmap. That's what this is about. You can leave this today. 
because Tom put this on. You could literally leave this today, put into action what I'm teaching you, and you could start doing this today without spending a dollar with me. Is that fair? Are we cool with that? I want to make it worth you being on this, right? I, I don't like these these webinars that people are on there all of a sudden. Oh, if you really want to learn, go spend, you know, we have trainings, but I'm not selling trainings here. I'm going to give you exactly what you need to do. Okay, so once again, class B to C plus neighborhoods. Those are your blue to white collar neighborhoods. Those are your contractors, your landscapers, your uh, lo lower office workers, your Amazon workers. Um, they're, they're not your executives. They're not your drug dealers. Does that make sense? Your A-class areas are your executives, your CEOs, your high-end income earners, and your class D is your drug dealers and your crime. Okay, so we're in the B to C plus, blue to white collar. Okay, I, now this is not next, next, a bullet is not a guarantee that it has to be this, but I love, what I love is three bedroom, one plus bath, so one to two baths, okay, with an ARV in no less than 100,000 to 250,000. Now, I remember I just had to redo my slides because it used to be 50,000 to, eight, to uh, 80,000. The numbers change, right? The markets go up. So it's a good thing, okay? It's because we want to be able to sell or finance these notes out to investors, okay? My goal is brick ranches, if possible, but I will buy other type of properties. I will buy townhouses. I will buy condos. I will buy a duplex, but my ultimate goal is brick ranches, right? Maintenance free as much as possible. I want to be at that. This is an important thing to me. I need to be in that 1% rent to value ratio. What that means is property is worth $100,000. The rent is about $1,000. Property is worth $120,000. The rent is about $1,200. Property is $150,000. Rent is about $1,500. Give or take, it could be it could be off a couple hundred. But you can't have a $500,000 property where the rent is $2,000. It will never work. It Those are the properties I keep in my rental portfolio as a legacy property but it will never work for seller financing to investors. And I don't sell a finance to owner occupants. Let's get that straight. I don't own a own finance to owner occupants. I don't want to deal with Dodd-Frank, CFPB, residential banking laws, okay? When you, when you sell a finance to non-owner occupants, they are considered commercial loans, not residential, okay? That's a big thing for me, big thing, okay? And we want to be in all our properties, just like you fixing flippers, just like your wholesalers. We want to be in at about 50 to 70% max ARV. Okay. So no different, right? We didn't do anything different. Everybody, I don't know if there's any wholesalers on here. We didn't do anything different. Our numbers are the same. The difference is we're not wholesaling these deals off to make 10, 20, 30, $40,000. We're keeping these to make a couple hundred thousand dollars and to live our life traveling like Tom just traveled with his wife, right? He didn't have to answer phones worrying about contractors, property managers, realtors, inspectors, appraisers, okay? So just so I'm clear, so you are selling these um, seller finance to investors that I'm assuming, because you're not they're not owner occupants. Yes, only investors that want turnkey rental properties. That's it. I know I did I did owner occupants until, Dodd, until we infamous Dodd-Frank came to light. And I was helping people that couldn't get mortgages back in 2008. And it stopped me from being able to do that. Because when you deal with owner occupants, you have to get them underwritten by an RMLO, which is fine. Okay. And you got to follow Dodd, Frank, and CFPB laws, which may or may not work. The problem with underwriting somebody as an owner occupant, your contractors, your property managers, your realtors, is most of them, if they have a good account, they shouldn't be showing all their income on the books. All right. So you truly can't underwrite them and get them approved. So that's why that kind of, you know, when, in this business, when things come up, when government overregulates and things come up, like they're doing now to wholesalers, you have to be able to divert and keep your business going. You can't shut down. So that's when I started going to non-owner occupants. Okay. So think about this, guys. Here's the thing I do. When I sell a property to an investor, a turnkey investor, I sell it. The 20,000 used to be, the 20,000 down used to be something of importance. Now it's not because properties are higher priced, but I take 30% down on my properties. Okay. So I don't let you buy a property with bank financing. I don't deal with bank financing. Why? Is because if I buy a property for $60,000 and I'm putting 20 to $30,000 into it and it's worth 120 to 130, the bank is not going to say it's worth 120 to 130 because they're seasoning. They're going to say it's worth 60,000. So I don't deal with banks. If you want to buy my properties, it's cash or seller financing. 
So when I sell a finance a property, I sell for 15% more than I sell for cash. So if it's a hundred thousand dollar property, it's a hundred thousand dollars cash or 115,000 seller financing. Now I take 30% down on every one of my properties. So on 115, let, let's just say it's a hundred thousand dollars self finance. I want your numbers easy. I don't want to stop pulling out calculators here. I'm taking $30,000 down. Correct. Mm -hmm. my thumbs up. Now, if you have a hundred thousand dollars and I sell your property for cash for a hundred thousand dollars, how many properties can you buy with a hundred thousand dollars? One. One. Yeah. But now you're buying with 30% down. Now, how many properties are you buying? Three. Three. So I just created ultimately $300,000 in ultimate net worth for you. Over the next, let's say how many, let's, let's say property doesn't go up in value. You, you will have $300,000 in net worth. And I just created three seller finance notes for myself. So it's a win-win, right? And now I have $70,000 in notes. So I have $210,000 in notes that I'm going to show you multiple times how I have exit strategies. So that's why... I work with turnkey investors. Now I'm going to talk about before COVID because after COVID, everything went through the roof. We sold way more properties. But before COVID in 2019, I sold 182 properties. I sold those to 18 investors. That means I averaged about 10 properties per investor. Now, if I did 182 properties to owner occupants, that's 182 people I got to deal with and realtors and mortgage companies and inspectors. So my investors come back to me over and over and over again to buy more properties because they want to build that legacy wealth a lot of it, a lot of dentists I get. And they're talking about they want to sell their practice in 10, 15 years. And they, they just want to consult and they want to have all these properties for the family. Okay. So I'm able to help with true legacy wealth. I'm truly helping other people while I'm making money and doing so. And that's what I call a win-win, right? That's what I call a win-win. So why would I wholesale these things off? Okay. And I talked a little bit about the next two bullet points. So I'm not going to go through that. So how do we find emerging markets? Okay, I teach this. How do I find emerging markets? I like markets with at least 10,000 people in your local market, right? So wherever you are in Indiana, if it's 10,000 people in your local market, but you're close enough to a big city within 45 minutes that there's 100,000 people. Okay, you could just go to Google and do a population search. I don't want to be in the rural areas where there's very little people and it's hard to get people to rent my properties. I want, I want like, excitement when my properties go for rent there's a waiting list and it happens every time okay i'm also want to have tenants that can afford my rent right so you're not in the major metropolitan areas like new york philadelphia california right uh colorado you're not in those areas where rents are so expensive florida now i'm in areas where think about two people that work at amazon can they afford my rent all right because they got to make three times my rent so you're amazon workers that's a great market. Anytime there's an Amazon plant, you know, you're probably in a decent market as long as your rent could support it. Okay. I want to check economic. This is important. See, when I go to a new market, I used to take people to new markets and build them out. That was part of my training. If I go to a new market, one of the meetings I do is with the EDC, Economic Development Corp, and the Chamber of Commerce. You can go online right now in any town you're in and look up the Economic Development Corp and the Chamber of Commerce, see what businesses are there, what's new coming what infrastructure is being put in place. So I'm giving you a way right now that you can find any market in the United States and do your research and go to any private lender and say, this is why you're, you're investing in that market. Okay. I also want to check real estate taxes. There's a lot of markets. Real estate taxes are excessive. Ultimately, I want to be one to 2% of the value of the property or under in real estate taxes. So I'm not doing stuff in New Jersey, California, New York, Pennsylvania right now. Any of these high taxes, I'm not doing I'm also not going to markets that are hard to evict or hard to foreclose. I don't want to get political, but hence I stay in the red markets. I'm not going to get political, but I'm going to stay in the red markets. I'm not dealing with anything with rent control. I'm not letting the government control how much I could charge for rent. I'm staying out of There's no reason to stay in those markets, right? I always, people like, but why? I said, it doesn't matter. Don't try to fit a square peg in a round hole. Do what works and don't fight the system. There's so much out there you could do. As long as you can get out of your own way. Now, where I live, is it's expensive. So that's why I have to be in other markets. But like Tom's in Indiana, it's a great market. I mean, you're close to so much out there. It's a great market. A great, you could build a whole business in that market. You don't have to go anywhere else. Okay, how do I find deals? Guys, people want to know how I find my deals. How I find my non-performing notes that I buy in bulk. How I find my REOs in bulk. While all you guys are out there sending letters, 
doing text messages, doing ringless voicemail, doing everything you can do out there to find deals. I literally every single day have deals hitting my inbox by the hundreds and I just pick and choose what I want. This is exactly how I do it. I give this when I do my training class, my inner circle training class or my two day training class or my online training. I open up my laptop live and show people me doing this live on the spot. I do this live. This is the steps one through six. Okay, I'm breaking down for you on LinkedIn how you go and you find these people and you reach out to them. Now, you got to build your relationship with them. I can't do that for you. But I'm telling you, people ask me all the time, how do I find my deals? This is how you find your deals. And think about it, guys. I own over 600 assets. I'm an asset manager. Now, I'm not really selling. I'll carve out seconds or first once in a while and sell them off to pay back my private lender. But I don't really go out and sell. But you should be reaching out to all the asset managers and staying consistent with them. Now, I'm not going to go step by step. I'm giving it to you here. How to do it. <laughs> but this is how I find my deals. This is how I have my asset managers. I do not send out letters. I do not do anything else but this to find asset managers. And they bring me deals. They bring me non-performing notes, REOs, tax liens. They bring me whatever I want. By the hundreds a week, I just pick and choose if it fits. Not everything's going to fit. But when I'm ready, I get them. Now, I buy deals from, I will buy from wholesalers. I will buy from realtors. I will buy direct from sellers. So don't just stop doing all that, but this is just one extra avenue you need to put in place, okay? Now, this is important, very important, how we rehab a property. And I see Tom does a great rehab as well. Um, I over-improve my rentals, okay? I make them maintenance-free, okay? I call them, I make them hard, I make them maintenance-free. This is where people tell me I was an idiot, but I'll tell you my numbers here why I do this, mm -hmm. okay? And I'll give you some rundowns. You can take a screenshot if you wanted to do this, okay? Some of the rules I have, is roofs 10 years old and older. I don't care. I change them. Okay. I change them. They could be great. I know roofs get 20, 25 years. I change them. HVACs 10 years or older. I change them. Hot water here is five years old and older. I change them. Okay. I always rip out the fixtures, the toilet bowls, the sinks, the faucets, and I replace them always. As soon as I walk in, I don't care how old they are. They, they're gone. They're so inexpensive to replace them. And if you don't, they're going to have leaks. I can promise you I, it happens every time I don't, I didn't do it. So for $180, I have a toilet roll, bowl replaced. I have a new vanity and sink and force it in there for five or $600. Beautiful. I do it every single shower heads, faucets, rings, I, uh, kitchen sinks, replace them. Okay. If I have to change countertops, if they're good, I leave them. If I have to change them for any reason, it is always level one or two granite. Always. I do not put Formanca countertops on anything. Don't do it. There's no reason for it. So when you pay $300 for a Fomanka, I pay for, for granite about nine to $1,100, depending on how the kitchen is, for remnant granite, okay? I get it. I do so many of them that I get deals all the time. It's And I'll tell you why that it makes sense to do what I'm doing, okay? Flooring, if there's wood, I, I redo the wood floors. If it's not, I go LVP, okay? I even go as crazy as new plate covers, for literally 60 cents is a plate cover. Change the plate covers, change the other covers, put new outlets. I'm telling you what, your your property is going to do this. It's going to rent faster. It's going to outrent. I outrent the neighborhood by 75 to $125 every time. Every time. So if you rent it for a thousand, I'm renting for a thousand seventy-five to eleven twenty-five with a waiting list, multiple applications, day one, every time. My average tenant, my average, these, these are where the numbers I blow people away. My average tenant stays over six years, over six years. So think about this, 75 to $125, I get more. My average tenant stays six years, so I don't have turnover cost. My average turnover cost is right at $1,500. Nobody in the industry can say that. Your paint and carpet's gonna be over 5,000. So why wouldn't you do what I do? I net out way more money. My properties rent faster, they're taken care of. I have no lag time. When somebody's moving out, it's literally go through, bring my clean person in and that's it. I literally give back security deposit almost every single time because they keep the property in such good condition, right? How many other people could say that? Landlords could say that. So when I sell these properties, this is why it's important because when I sell these properties, whether I keep them or not, this is what I do. When I sell these properties, you think my dentist or my physical therapist, a chiropractor that is buying them, wants to get these phone calls that they just bought a property and then the roof is leaking two months later? You think they want to get that? You think they want to deal with the countertop is messed up. You want to think they want to talk about a leak in the faucet or the toilet bowl is leaking. They don't want that. They want a happy tenant. Happy tenant makes their life, it's passive income for them. 
So that's why I set it up that way. Spend a little bit more money up front, and I'm telling you, you'll make net way more money and less headaches, and you truly live your vision. So I've given you what I do. These are the steps. I told you how I find my deals, how I find my market, how I fix my property, okay? And I just talked about this. I just talked about my turnover cost and everything, okay? How do we find buyers who are dying for our turnkey rentals? Well, the biggest thing is we talk about, we show what we do online, okay? We show, we go out, we do due diligence. So we do professional presentations, okay? We don't just throw something on the wall and say, who wants to buy my property, one, two, three, Main Street. I use professional presentations. There's property, there's property valuation companies out there. There's so many presentations you can use. There's a million of them out there. If you don't know how to do it, just sign up for one of these companies, put your property in there, make it look professional, send it out. But educate, don't sell, educate. It's content, content, content. So if I did a webinar like this and all I talked about was turnkey rentals, why turnkey rentals is great for you, why this Cleveland market is phenomenal for you, why Birmingham, why Indiana is great for you. And then I just, now people would hit me up and say, hey, I want to buy one of your properties. And I start showing them numbers, showing them how I do my rehab, why I buy in that market. I just educate them. They're going to ask me all the time, how do I get one of your properties? And that's what we do. We, we have more, we need more properties, not more buyers at this point, because we have a waiting list, right? And we don't mess around. If you don't take action, we don't deal with you ever again. Okay. So we send out, so when we get a property, I kind of know who's going to buy. Like Tom might say, hey, I'm looking for your next property. I have about $50,000. I want to buy one. So where do you want to buy? We talk about it. Once I get one, I send it to them. I don't send it out to everybody. But when you guys first get started, you're going to have a list of people and follow what I'm doing because I do this now. Even at the end, I'm going to give you guys free stuff. But you could go out and give people free stuff and say, hey, if you want to learn about turnkey rental properties, sign up here. Now you have a list of people. You could form your own group like Tom has here and you can start sending it out. Business owners, right? Business owners, get a group of medical professionals, get a group of airline pilots, get a group of anybody, nurses, teachers, and start teaching them about this. Teach them about all the tax benefits of owning rental properties. Teach them how to create wealth for themselves. Teach them how to not have to pay for their kids' college education out of their own pocket. Teach them how to save on taxes with a solo 401k. Teach them about life insurance policies. Teach them how to be the bank. There's so many ways you could do it to build a list of people who are interested. And now you bring property to them. They give you a checkbook and they say, go out shopping for me. Okay. And then you do things like I did. I just put this out there. I went back to a Facebook post where I was in Mississippi. I had over 200 something assets from an asset manager. And I don't know, we worked like 15, 20 of them. And I just did videos and put them on Facebook live. I was doing Facebook live and I was doing videos of me walking the property. So what happens after that, everybody starts reaching out to you and saying, how do I get one of those properties? So you just educate. It's all about education. Okay. So we talked a little bit about this. I'm not going to go more into that. That's how we, we fix the properties, right? I'm going to start showing you. I want to talk about multiple exit strategies, guys. This is the, this is the goal, right? Multiple exit strategies. So that's my whiteboard presentation. You'll probably see me do that in September if you show up at Tom's event. That's where... Everything kind of gels for you. And that's where your mouth will probably, I promise you, your mouth will drop. But I warn you, you might change your business model once you see this. I promise you. Here's a live deal, guys. This was in Belfound, Ohio. This is a live deal. I'm going to show you proof. Are you cool if I show you proof of this deal? Like, I like to proof up. When I do my live events, I open my laptop and I proof up. I mean, I'll log right into my system, my servicing account, and I'll show you proof of everything. I'll log into the title company. I'll show you when we closed on this. But I have some screenshots I'm going to show you. So this property is now valued a year and change later, maybe 14 months later, but $165,000. When I sold this, it was valued at one thirty-five. dollars I put this together when I sold this property. I purchased this on a short sale with one of my students for $55,000. I raised private money. I raised about $75,000 for this deal, including sort of covered interest. We did $17,309 in rehab and soft cost. Okay. We sold this property for $135,000 when we were done. This property is now rented for $1,450 a month. Okay. You have the numbers so far? We're into it for about $75,000. I sell a finance this property for 30 years with 30% down. Okay. We sold it to him for a discount. This was one of my students. We sold it for a discount. Here is the purchase. You can look it up if you want. Take the address. I always believe trust and verify everything I tell you. 
I could be lying to you. Trust and verify me. That's why I have no problem putting my, I always say, make, make your, make your instructors. Or, I don't like the word guru. Someone nicknamed me, you know, you nicknamed me, nicknamed me the guru, not the guru. Uh, Cause I do the work. All right. But here, 516 Hamilton street. Okay. That's who we bought it from. I didn't even black that out. We bought it in 2022. We sold it last year. I think in two, I, I got to look when we sold it. Um, we bought it for $55,000. Okay. There's our closing statement. When we sold it, we sold it for $135,000. Right. At the end of the year. So six months later, six months later, we sold it. $135,000. We have a $94,500 note. Okay. So with the money we got down, we were able to carve out a first and a second mortgage, sell off the second mortgage, pay my private lender back, and we stay in this deal. So check this out. There's the there's the contract that we sold over $135,000. And here's my servicing agreement, the same property. So now I collect $678 a month. My private lender is paid back. I collect $678 a month for the next 30 years. I don't have to deal with tennis toilets or trash. How many notes do you need at $678 a month to live the life you want to live? Is it five? Is it 10? Is it a hundred? What is it? What is your number? Drop in the chat box. I'm going to look later. What is your number? Not to live the, listen, I'm, I don't want you to compare yourself to Dan Zatowski. I'm already done, right? Because people are like, I need to make what you make. No, no, no. What do you need to make to live that next set? Whether it's, I want to leave my nine to five job. I want to retire my spouse. I want to buy my mom our house. I want to have enough money to, so I don't have to ever go to work if I don't want to again. What is that number? Don't throw at me 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars. And I'll tell you why I know, because I know my number is way less than that. Now, and I'll tell you why, because once you hit that number, it's like a hockey stick. It just trajects really high because now you forget about everything else. You can focus on this. So this is one of my lowest seller finance notes. Some of them are as high as $3,200 a month. So what is the number you need to make? And then let's back it out by figuring out your market, figuring out the type of property, how much money you need, right? Tom just said there's a hard money lender here. How much money do you need to get there? Back out the numbers. And then when you're doing deals, instead of wholesaling them, start keeping them, start closing on them. So I help a lot of my students that I work with close on deals. I'm like, stop wholesaling. Let's close on them together. That was this deal. That's why I show it to you. We do probably two to three deals now a month. This was that deal with a student. I was like, let's stop host. He was a wholesaler. Let's stop wholesaling. Let's keep it. Okay. So you see that deal right there. That's so a most people deal. are saying somewhere between 10 and 20 deals. That's awesome. That's a realistic number. Now with that 10, 20 deals, how many deal, Tom, how many deals a year? I don't know. You're not wholesaling. How many deals a year are wholesaling do, wholesalers doing right now? I don't know. I mean, I think we we talk to guys that sell anywhere from five to fifty. <laughs> I know. I get, I deal with people that are doing that a month. Some big wholesalers that are doing that a month, and I was like, Dude, just carve out. If you only need to do ten a year. Now I'm telling you, here's the other thing. I didn't show, I didn't show this right on a whiteboard at your event. I'm going to show this. At each deal, I can carve out ten twenty thousand dollars cash as well, and still stay in the deal. So instead of getting six hundred seventy eight dollars here a month. Maybe I get $500 a month and I carve 20 grand in my pocket for that vacation to Ecuador. That's what I show people. Now I have a note for $90, $93,000. Now remember that note is an ATM machine. I can do five things with that note. I'm going to talk about those five things, right? Once you own the note, you own the gold guys. Understand that. It's not a property. It's a note. It's the most powerful thing in the banking industry is a note. The most powerful thing is owning a seller finance note the way I do it. Now, I also, besides five exit strategies, I call it the power of five, and I'm going to get into that legal docs. But let's talk about the exit strategies first. Okay, strategy number one, really easy. You could sell off the note. Let's say you do three or four notes. You could sell one or two off, recapitalize, and stay in the deal. So I could sell that note off, 90, that $94,000 note now, for at least $94,000. Probably 97000 So I could make a couple of thousand dollars over what, what is owed on that note because of how powerful these notes are. So I could sell the note right now in the open market very easily. It would sell, how many people want to passively make, what's my interest rate on this one? 
This one is 9.99% interest rate. I remember how many people want to make 10% passively on a property that the it's fully rehab, it's fully rented, it's fully managed by a third party property manager with equity, right? It's equity, property's worth 165. And the investor put 30% down. Do you think they're going to lose this house for a 600 something dollar mortgage payment? Well, plus it's somebody that can really afford the payment. It's you're not seller financing it to the person in the in the house. That's right. just like a renter. Exactly. And if the tenant stops paying, you think this person right. is going to lose a, their 30% down, which is $40,000 over a $678 payment that might take three months to, to get in a payment again. Right. Once you evict them. So this is such a powerful note. And then I talk about the five legal docs that I put in place for them. But let's talk about the strategies here. Okay, strategy one, sell the note off in full. Okay. I include in strategy one, it's really strategy two. I do this a lot. I carve out, which I show here, if you can see my napkin presentation, I carve out a first and a second. I'll sell the second or the first, and I'll stay in the first or second. So when I carve it out and I sell it, that will allow me to pay my private lender all their money back. And I stay in another deal. And not only do I pay the lender back, if I sell to somebody who has wants 7% on their money, 6%, 8%, and I'm charging 11% on a second, I stay in the deal for 3%. So not only do they get the money back to pay my private lender in full, they're out of the deal, goodbye. Now I get 3% on one mortgage and I get the whole thing on the other mortgage for 30 years. How cool is that? So that's selling the first or second and staying in the other one. And I'll show that at your event. I'll be able to show that on the whiteboard. And in fact, you can let people know, and I do this at every event. Anyone that has a deal at the event, bring it to, to me and challenge me on the whiteboard. I don't even know what they're going to bring me. And I'll see if it works. And I'll tell you right there if it works or not. Okay. Strategy two I have here, but it's really three, is sell-off payments. Now, 30, 30 years is 360 payments. Am I correct? Right? I'm not saying anything wrong. 30-year note is 360 payments. Mm -hmm. Even though I have a 10-year balloon. So it's 360 payments. Selling a partial is exactly what it sounds like. I'm selling part of the loan. So I could sell five payments, 10 payments, 20 payments, 30 payments, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. It doesn't matter. So if somebody comes to you, how many, how many people know others that have money in IRAs, 401ks, covered DELs, health savings accounts, life insurance policies? They might only have $30,000 cash. They don't really have enough for a deal. They come to you, they I want to get involved in this, but I only have $30,000. Or they pay their kids $12,000 plus a year tax-free. They have three kids, that's $36,000. They don't really have enough to buy a deal. Or they don't want to. They're running their, one's a teacher, one's a doctor. Well, they come to you and they say, I'm happy with better than average returns from a bank. Well, now they come to you and you offer them 7% on their money. So you take $36,000 and you figure out what 7% would be and you sell them that many payments. So let's say you sell 40 payments. What do you think happens on the 41st payment? Reverts back to you. Comes right back to you like a boomerang. That's where the partial is. Once again, remember, seller finance notes are ATM machines. They're cards. You can go anytime you want, pull money out of them. They are literally ATM cards anytime you want. So that's option three. Okay. Option four is what we call hypothecation. You can look that up. Same thing, instead of selling partials, you can go to somebody that has forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, 20000 10000 doesn't matter. You want to go on a vacation to Ecuador? I need $20,000. You want to go to Fiji Islands? I need $10,000. I have my 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 pro all my properties in Rowatan. You want to come visit Rowatan? You want to bring $20,000 and live life out there? Well, go out and somebody with $20,000, borrow it against your note. Give them a promissory note against your note. If you don't pay them, they take the whole note. Of course, you're going to pay them if they give you $20,000 and you're holding a note for $94,000 on a property worth $165,000 now that's getting $1,400 a month in rent. Why wouldn't you pay them? The best thing that happens is you don't pay somebody back. They want you not to pay them. They want to take that note from you. So that's called a hypothecation. You could borrow against your note. You give them a promissory note. If you don't pay them, they get the collateral. You do a collateral assignment they're covered, right? So that's option four. Now, the most powerful option that I haven't taken advantage of until I'm probably going to be doing it here soon is I get leverage, right? Your local bank, you're not walking into Wells Fargo, Chase, or PNC. 
leverage. You take your notes that I'm talking about. You walk into the bank. You have a relationship. You sit down with the banking manager, your local community banks, your credit unions. You say, I want to get lines of credit against my note. They're going to say, what do you have? Obviously, they're going to make you a personal guarantee. Check this out, guys. I get four to 10 times leverage on my note at prime minus a half right now. Now, prime is high, but think about it. It's, it's like private lending, interest only, okay? So think about it. A $100,000 note, I happen to get 10 times leverage. That's a million dollars leverage on a $100,000 note. Now, I told you I have over 400, 431 to be exact seller finance notes today. Now, imagine how many people are going out there and they get these deals and they're trying like crazy to raise money for a multifamily. I can literally just pledge my notes to the bank, do a collateral assignment. They will give me lines of credit on every one of them, and I can buy anything I want cash. Now, the rates are high today because Prime is high today, but I have that option. Now, I haven't taken that option, but I'm approved for that option. So imagine what you could do if you get Prime at four to 10 times leverage, Prime minus a half, or even Prime. Even over Prime, even 10, 11%, who cares? If it's interest only, like a line of credit, because you have these notes. Now, you can't do that. Nobody's going to give you that on a house. They're not going to give you four to 10 times leverage on a house. Why is it so important, right? Life insurance policies, same thing. They're giving you leverage on those. They're giving you leverage on these notes. It's the most powerful thing in the industry, okay? So those are my five exit strategies, right? I broke them up over three because they both were, you know, either selling them off is under strategy one. Borrowing against them is under strategy two. And then strategy three is working with a bank. Does that make sense? Five strategies. Yep. And I'm going to talk about why they're so powerful and the power of, you know, power of fives. How do you raise money and stuff like that? So, and, and how they're so powerful, I'll get into that. But how do we raise money? That's the important thing, okay? We're raising money a couple of different ways. We're educating people. We don't ever ask for money. So we're working with people with self-directed IRAs, okay? And you could be writing white papers on this like I do. You could be talking about it on social media. You could be having investor meetings like I teach in my Raising Private Money course, how to do investor meetings, okay? And that's how I've raised in velocity over $400 million doing exactly this. As I'm not talking about thesis, I'm talking about what I actually do today and how I raise money. Okay. So you talk about and educate people on self directed IRAs. Talk, understand solo 401ks. Those are great for business owners. I did talk about Chamber of Commerce, right? Those are all business owners. I do it live at my event. When I'm at an event, I go live. I talk, I pull up how many potential private lenders do you want to find? I pull up thousands live. Now you got to work them, but I live, I could pull up thousands. In fact, my team used to sell these to people for $1.25 a name. We don't do that anymore. Okay. Health savings accounts, probably the best investment vehicle you could work because it's tax-free in, tax-free out. The only one is tax-free in, tax-free out. So learn about them. So you can educate people on those, especially business owners. If you educate business owners how to put a hundred grand a year tax-free into an account, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to want to invest it with you. They Great. I have the money in there, Tom, but what do I do with it now? Well, mm -hmm. what do you know? I have this deal I could do. I could put it to work for you. You could become the bank, get passive income. Yep. Okay. Learn about Coverdell accounts. Okay. They work just like a 529 plan, except you could invest it in, in real estate, notes, um, things like that. Right. So you could put, you could pay your kids tax free. Then your kids could put money into a Roth IRA. They could put money into a Coverdell account. They'll never have to, that's how my kid's college has been paid for without, without them having to pay for it, okay? Turn $2,000 into a couple hundred thousand dollars doing real estate. Now, how many people here have done deals? Tom, how many deals have you done where you could have taken $2,000 and turned it into 100 grand, one of his properties? You could do that with a kid's cover deal account, mm -hmm. okay? Learn about infinite banking. I'm not a life insurance agent. I literally could sell infinite banking better than most because I understand the details inside and out with infinite banking. Why? because I want to educate people on infinite banking, IUL policy, whole life policies. And then I bring an insurance agent in and say, here, sign off on this. Give me the cross, sign off on it. Why is because if I educate them, I don't ask for anything. I open their eyes and then I say, here's the expert. I'm not the expert. This is just what I use. And I use it myself. Because once you learn to become your own bank, now people are putting $150,000 policies in effect and now they have the money and they want, they're paying six and a quarter percent interest on their policy, but they're turning around and they're now they're making 10%, 11%, 12%. They're arbitraging. 
In fact, at my event, my last event, I said, if I ever had another kid, I'm naming him Arbitrage. <laughs> I did. You could ask anyone that was at that Inner Circle event. I was like, I'm naming him Arbitrage, whatever my kid is. Uh, obviously, he locks home equity line of credits we raise money for and cash and cash in banks. But please don't ever guarantee a return to anybody. Don't do that. I see it all the time. You're not legally allowed to guarantee a return. My attorney would kill me if I ever did that. Don't everything's a risk, but what we do guarantee is we mitigate the risk by doing what we do. The markets we buy in, how we rehab a house, how much money we take down, all our legal docs, we mitigate the risk. Okay. So here's our power of five. I talk about the legal docs. If you do a deal with me, you will be signing these. You will be signing these. If you do it, if you don't sign these, you will not get a sell a finance deal from me or private money from me. Okay. I don't care what your story is. You will sign these. Why? It's because I need my note to be as powerful as possible in case I sell it, in case I borrow against it. I'm not worried about foreclosing on you because these deals are so strong. I've never had somebody not pay one of my deals. Never. Not these deals. When I lend 100% financing, oh yeah, all the time, right? They walked. So the five docs I do, I'm going to tell them to you and they're here. You can take a picture. I do the mortgage and I record the mortgage. There's only two docs I record. Mortgage is one of them. So you, I'll do a mortgage. I do an assignment or, assignment or rents. That means if you don't pay me within 30 days, that letter goes to the tenant. That rent now comes to me. Once again, I'm making my note really powerful. I record the assignment of rent. Okay. Promissory note. Promissory note spells out the note, spells out the details, how much you borrow, when it's due, how much you have to pay me. Okay. Spells out all the details. Personal guarantee. Yes, I'm selling these to you in your corporation. And you and your if you're married, your spouse will sign the personal guarantee. If your spouse refuses to sign it, well, then why would I trust you if your spouse doesn't trust you? And it's funny because this has almost cost divorces in some households. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just not, if she doesn't trust you, he doesn't trust you, I don't trust you. I'm just not doing it. Because here's the thing. I see it all the time. Like over the last two years, all of a sudden now I'm mentoring people on becoming private lenders as well. Because they do paperwork at a local RIA and they're doing it wrong. And then all of a sudden there's a personal guarantee but you're married and you have a house together, but your wife or your husband didn't sign that personal guarantee. You can't go after them because they didn't agree to that. So if they're married, both parties have to sign a personal guarantee. Are we good? And if you don't trust the deal, why would I? I had no problem when I started signing personal guarantees. Now people, I can write a note on a napkin, they'll take it. But I still want to protect them. I never take advantage of them. I always protect my private lenders. All right, God forbid something happens to me. I make sure they're covered in insurance. They're always protected. I know the deal is a good deal. I have no problem signing it. I've never not paid a dollar back in 34 years. So I have no problem. Confession of judgment. That means you're throwing your hands up in the air and saying, I confess to a judgment. Even though, you know, we go to court, you're not going to have a long, lengthy court battle for confession of judgment. So those are five docs. Okay. When you talk about your, to your private lenders, hey, I'm going to protect you with these five docs. Plus, I do life insurance. I put their name as a, a, a on the life insurance policy, on a keynote policy. Um, I also do title insurance. I do homeowners insurance. I always protect my private lenders. That's the most important thing for me. Like people say, what keeps you up at night? That's what keeps me up at night. Make sure my private lenders are protected. God forbid something happens to me. They're paid back first. And then the money can be distributed to my to my legacy, all right? Okay, so why are these the most sought after properties we talked about? I think I went through this a lot. Why they're so sought after? But this is, what, this is why I back this out. And I implore you, whatever business you're in, back out. Make your assets the most sought after assets. Whether you're a wholesaler, make them the most sought after deals you can find. If you're a flipper, make the most sought after. Don't try to find, do a flip in an area where people aren't buying. But one is a great emerging markets, good job growth, get infrastructure, low crime, decent schools, low taxes, all of that stuff. High end rehabs. Make sure you, I, I cannot employ, that's one of the biggest things I ever did was change my rehabs many years ago. Okay, I rent it. I'm the most expensive landlord in a neighborhood and I have a waiting list of people that want my property. That's saying something for you, okay? I do the 10, 10, 10. That means that at least, I'm gonna tell you, that this makes the note the most powerful note in the industry. At least 10% down, minimum 10% down. I take 20 to 30%, okay? So 10% down. Interest rate, 10%. My lowest is 9.99 to 11.99%. So I'm at that second 10, okay? And then a 10-year balloon, even though I want the loan for 30 years out there, I give them a 10-year balloon. At the 10-year mark, I'm just going to extend them, okay? The reason you do that is because you want to, if you ever want to sell your note or borrow against your note or leverage on your note, they don't want 30 years out there. People have time value of money. 
I want 30 years. So I have to put a 10 year balloon on it. So I always do a 10, 30 year AM with a 10 year balloon and a three year prepayment penalty. That's what I always do my loans. So a 10, you'll hear this, a 10, 10, 10 is the most powerful. That's what it means. I just wanted you to know what it means. Once again, I don't self-manage these. When I sell a finance them, I give them to a third party property management company. There's always some equity in the property. Borrow always puts skin in the game. I don't sell property 100% financing. I do the five power legal docs and I have it professionally serviced by a third party servicing company. And I use for almost all, 98% of my deals are set up with FCI loan servicing, okay? They make my life easy. And in fact, I don't even pay the servicing, my borrower pays it. It's in my, as long as you put in your promissory note, the borrower pays the servicing fee. So it costs me absolutely nothing to have a professionally serviced so I can make sure the borrower is taken care of. So all their mortgage interest statements are filed so that their uh, end of year tax statements are filed. Their amortization schedule is followed because that is not my skill set. Believe me, that's not my skill set doing it. Plus, I don't want to open my computer in the summer. And if you can't leave your business and close your computer and your phone for six months, you don't have a business, you have a job. And I created this where I don't have to do anything if I don't want to. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you this and I'm going to go to questions. I gave you something for free. Once again, here's my book. If you don't have my book, you can scan that. Get the book. I'm not really here to sell you stuff. That actually gets donated anyway, but it's a, a breakdown of our, my best-selling book, Passive to Prosperous. And then I'm also going to give you uh, something for free. I wrote a white paper that I give out when I speak. If you come to Tom's event, you'll probably get this or another white paper. I put a lot of time into my white papers. I want to really break down everything I do in my business. So uh, you can get that. You can get those white papers and stuff like that. If you need my contact info, I know people ask me all the time. You can just scan that. It'll come up with all my social media stuff. Once again, I'm not selling anything here. You cannot buy anything from me here. Um, I just want to get back and answer questions you guys have. Just, just please respect my time. Um, don't just pick up a phone and call me ever because I probably won't answer. Um, <laughs> let's have a schedule call with you. Um, I just don't. I just don't. But I have a lot of free stuff. And just so you know, on social media, I am the only person that answers my messages. You'll never get a virtual assistant to answer my messages. I just don't believe in it. I want to be true to myself. I, I, I want to answer. I love on people. I want to truly help them. I'll never have a coin message back to you. I'll never have any of that. If you have a true question, uh, especially if you've gone through any training, you really put the time and effort uh, and investment in events or training, and you really have a question that I can help you with, I'm happy to help you with. So with that, um, say any questions? Guys, this has been a true honor to help you. I know I go through this fast. I teach this in two full days. So I try to put it all into a presentation, but I want the presentation to be more about how you can leave this, close the computer right now and start taking action. Like you could walk out of here and say, okay, what emerging market? How do I find an emerging market? Okay, how do I put this together? What kind of properties would fit what Dan was saying? And that's truly what I want. But uh, and we have probably stuff on the chat box, Tom, but if anyone has any questions and you want to ask them, I'm yeah, I'll well, take a quick look here. A couple of people uh, said, thanks for the presentation. Good presentation. You know, Ken wants to know how to get a uh, autographed copy of your book. I, I mean, I think the best way is to come to the event here yeah. in Bring September. The book the yeah. In fact, anyone that comes to your event, I, you know, and Dawn knows my wife will probably be there too. She always tries to come with me. Um, she knows like when I'm done speaking, believe it or not, I'm the most extroverted introvert you'll meet. I speak sometimes. I've spoken in front of a crowd of 17,000 people at a corporate America event. I love it. But it's like I get bombarded afterwards and she knows, get me out of there, get me like to a green room and relax. But I promise I love this. I love answering questions. I would implore everyone to bring the book to the event. I will sign and take pictures with every one of you. I promise. Um, and I will be, I also, unless I have another speaking event, I have to get to, I'm going to tell you this. And I, I, I believe in this and it's kind of set me apart. I spend the whole time at the event. I don't just come in, yeah. fly in, speak and fly out. Um, we do, we do a lot of times fly private, but I don't fly in and fly out. I believe it's an, you know, it's, it's the wrong thing to do. If you're coming to an event, paying time and money, whether it's free or not, you're taking time and money to hear people speak. I know you, I can't give you enough on stage and the amount of time I have to answer your questions. I know you're going to have questions and I am more than willing to sit down you grab me and we'll have a conversation. I'll answer your questions. So I will be at that event every day that it's on, unless something, I, some reason I have to leave. Sometimes I have to attend a court case for a hearing for one of our mortgages and I have to be present. But other than that, I'm at that event. I don't just come in and leave. So just, you definitely want to be at that event. I, I appreciate that. 
Dan, and mo I, will, I do say most of the speakers are that way for our event. I've been to a lot of events where peak speakers just come in and leave and you never get to talk to them. Um, so part of, part of the reason why we do the VIP the night before is so you can actually just nail down those speakers before the event even you know starts. And we and every night we also have um, like a networking event each night. So it's not just like the event every single night we're either um, staying here. One of the nights locally, we actually uh, do, sometimes we do karaoke. We love to do real estate horror stories because everybody loves to talk about their horror stories that they've had in, in real estate. Uh, so we'll do that as well. Um, but make sure you guys show up to, so if you guys haven't gotten those tickets, make, make it happen. One, there's one more question I do see in the chat. If anybody else has any other questions, throw them in the chat or if familiar, you want to let people, um, you know, get on and, and, uh, and talk, they can, uh, what are your dates for your Charlotte event? Pam is actually asking that. Oh, right now we don't, our next event is, is earmark two. We got coming up. One is, uh, for my own personal events, we have one probably the third week in October, I think around October 21st. Uh, we're going to be doing our inner circle workshop. Uh, that's going to be capped at 15 people. We interview people to get into that. Um, that's that's probably one of my best events. Um, it's not it's not cheap. I'll tell you right now, but it's we put all the money and we donate every dollar in that event. But we do a lot of business out of that event. Um, so that's probably going to be in October. I don't have one penned for and then I don't have one penned for Charlotte right now. And then we have another one coming. I know in March we're asked to speak with uh, very, very accredited investors out of Puerto Rico which is one of the reasons I can't go to DealMaker right now because I am speaking out of Puerto Rico now. So uh, that's that's coming up. But, you know, stay tuned. I always have stuff coming up. I, I'm i not an event planner, guys. I hope you you appreciate that. It, the hardest thing in the world is to put on events. It, it is just, it's a four or five month process. It, you, you lose money at every one of them. And uh, you're grinding trying to get people to come to these events. And I donate every dollar at the events. And I love to do it. That's why people are like, why do you do the events? Because one is I love two things. I love to teach and I love to donate money in a big way. And I'm committed to, you know, 10,000 wheelchairs by December 31st, 2027 with Augie, right? That's my next one. I just did a big thing with Be Positive Foundation from University of Delaware. I'm big with Make-A-Wish Foundation. I was the executive producer of the movie Wish Man, putting that off for the founder. And I'm huge in operation on the ground. These are some things that are really dear and near to my heart. So that's why I continue. That's why I'll not stop doing this. And people are like, what well, one is enough for you? It's not enough because I want to do these events because I want to love on you guys and I want to teach. And then the people that come to the event are the ones that I love to do business with. I love to fund deals. I love to partner on deals um, because they invest time and money in themselves, right? And that's what I look for. To me, the events are like an interview process of who I want to work with. And they learn to do deals the right way. So if I'm going to fund their deals, and I fund a lot of deals at events, a lot of them. They bring me deals. I fund it so much. Or I partner with them, I buy it with them. And I'm like, well, if you're going to take the time and money to learn to do deals the right way, then I, if you believe in yourself and you invest time and money in yourself, then I believe in you. But if you don't invest time and money in yourself, then why would I do it, right? So it's like an interview process for me. And I'm sure it's the same way with you, Tommy. I'm sure you get a lot of that. Absolutely. So appreciate you being on. Um, if there's any more questions, do you like Georgia for buying in? Somebody asks. I do, uh, I do as a rental, but not definitely not as seller financing. Georgia is one of those states that even if it's not owner occupant, you still have to follow licensing rules. You can only do like three a year. So uh, just, and I'll tell you this, whatever market you're in, I'll leave you with this. Call the banking department and check with them. Check what's the interest rate you could charge are and how many loans you could do before you have to be licensed. But Georgia is one of those states where they consider commercial residential. So I, I just, once again, I don't need to, so I don't do it. But if you just want rental properties, yeah, Georgia is a good market. Parts of Georgia are a good market. Um, somebody's asking how the best way to learn your system. Do you have a, a place for them to go or do you have courses or do you have a, an event coming up that an, anybody can learn your system? Yeah, just just follow me on social media. I'll always have stuff out there. You could always message me um, direct. I don't want to, I'm not really here to sell anything. I do have online trainings you can get into. Um, but the best thing is, honestly, you got guys like Tom putting on, great events there. I speak at a bunch of them and I turn down probably six to seven out of every one I accept. So if I'm there, it means I've done the due diligence on the show host. I've done the due diligence on, I, I just so you know, I check out every speaker before I attend an event, before I speak an event, I check out the show host. I do background checks on every one of them. And uh, so that should say something that I'm showing up to Tom's event and speaking. That means that he's doing deals and, and he has to align with me. Because the worst thing to do is be around the show host that's ripping their people off and, and in it for the wrong reasons. 
So um, yeah, I'm, I'm speaking all the time, but, and, and uh, I have online trainings. You can reach out to me. I, I, like I said, I don't want to be here selling you stuff. I want to just give, give, give. And, uh, but you know, follow me on social media. Unfortunately, if your friend requests me personally, I probably can't accept it because I hit that 5,000 friends, but you can follow me there. You can follow my Facebook groups, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, all that stuff. Awesome. Uh, hey, Dan, can you just un unshare real quick? Sure. Um, just so we can kind of, I'll, I'll back out of here. So if anybody has any more last questions, throw them in the chat. Um, if not, just want to remind everybody um, that uh, next month is on the 11th. Um, so you guys can uh, make sure you guys sign up for that call um, right here with Alicia Merriman talking about Airbnbs. And really, she puts this on autopilot. And honestly, like I said, I think she's the best I've ever seen at uh, teaching people about Airbnb. So thank you so much, Dan, for investing in our community today. I learned a lot. I took a bunch of notes. I love the different, the five different ways you can exit. Um, I love the fact that you're actually charging more if they want seller finance than if, if, they, if they're going to pay cash. Um, and I also love the fact that you're really trying to do this to be able to help others. Uh, to me, that's, uh, that, that, that's a big deal for me. And honestly, you know, I, I cannot, I cannot agree with him more. I cannot, um, align with him better when it comes to making sure that, you know, for me personally, me, uh, we, we've had to quit two groups this year just because I don't feel like I, you know, I no longer align with, you know, either the, the, the people that are putting on the group. Um, there's been too many deals that may have gone bad in that group that, that just people aren't happy with. And I don't want to be associated with that. Um, or I just, we, I don't feel like we align with our core values and I just appreciate Dan's um, efforts. And I also, cause it, it takes a lot of work. And I think sometimes it takes, it takes guts um, to kind of, you know, be willing to um, stand for what you believe in. And to me, that's way more important than like the next hundred dollars you're going to make or the next $20,000 you're going to make. Um, because a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And I appreciate Dan for all that. And at the end, all these things will be added unto you if you do the right things anyway. So um, appreciate you, Dan, for being on that. I can't wait to have you at the event. Um, and I think we should, we should, we should have more conversations um, with, with each other. Cause I, I love what you're doing there. So thank you again. Be on next month, June 11th, 10 AM central. Remember everybody to be a conduit, not a bucket work to have to give God bless. Have a good day guys. Thank you.